Hello and welcome to our morning service here at Aiken Parish in York. I'm Julian, I'll be leading you through the service. We've got other people helping uh, and contributing later on. I do invite you to please join in with the singing and the responses to the prayers that will come up on the screen. And I hope you feel that we're joining together to worship God this morning. I wonder if any of you have noticed anything a bit strange as I'm welcoming you. Yes, that's right. I've still got my nativity set up. I wonder if anyone else has still got theirs up at home. Some people do have the tradition of keeping their Christmas decorations up until February the 2nd, and that's on Tuesday. That's 40 days after Christmas. So today, on the nearest Sunday, we're celebrating Candlemas, the final scene in the Christmas story. And we're remembering when Jesus was presented at the temple. Jesus' parents did what Jewish tradition in Palestine 2,000 years ago told them to do. But God used that traditional undertaking for his own plans and his purposes. And we'll be hearing what happened later. For now, we're going to join together with Caris and Tony to remind ourselves that Jesus grew from a baby to a man and to remind ourselves what Jesus has done for us and what Jesus is doing for us. From the swallow of a borrowed stable By the spirit of the virgin's faith To the anguish and the shame of scandal Came the saviour of the Sometimes we forget what Jesus has done for us and what Jesus is doing for us. So let's just spend a moment of quiet thinking over the last week before we confess our weakness and unbelief. And I invite you to join in with the responses to the prayers on the screen. Lord Jesus, this week 
we have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, Lord, hear us and help us. Lord Jesus, we have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, Lord, hear us and help us. Lord Jesus, we have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, Lord, hear us and help us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sin and walk with us as we serve him in the world. Amen. And let's pray today's collect together. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. And next, we're going to have our gospel reading today from Luke's gospel, and then Andrew will share some thoughts with us. And then after that, we're going to sing again with Caris and Tony. Alleluia, alleluia. Christ was revealed in flesh, proclaimed among the nations and believed in throughout the world. Alleluia. The reading is taken from Luke 2, verses 22 to 40. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus presented at the temple. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, that you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And his father and his mother marveled at what was said about, about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce through your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher, and she was advanced in years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshipping and fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned into Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom. 
and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The elderly have been much in the news lately, like Sir Tom Moore, and stories of the excitement and gratitude of old people who've been among the first to receive the Covid jab. In today's Bible reading from St Luke's Gospel, Luke seems to go out of his way to introduce two elderly people who are not central to his narrative, but are a delightful addition from whom I believe we can learn. After all, so often these days, it's youth which is prized. I'm going to suggest that Luke's account of Simeon and Anna meeting Mary and Joseph when they brought Jesus, their firstborn, to the Jerusalem temple is a story of waiting, a story of wonder, and a story of warning. First, a story of waiting. Simeon and Anna were ordinary people who were patiently waiting for God to act. Luke says that Simeon was waiting for the consolation of Israel. Simeon, it seems, was concerned at the state of his country, perhaps mourning its harsh occupation by a foreign power, Rome. In his faithful devotion in the temple, Maybe he meditated on Isaiah's prophecy that one day God would bring comfort to his dispirited people. Anna was clearly a part of a group who, as Luke puts it, was also waiting, waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Anna and her friends were concerned about the needs of her home city. These last 10 months, we've all been waiting. Waiting for lockdown to take effect. Waiting for a vaccine to be developed. Waiting for the vaccines to be rolled out. Waiting for life to get back to some sort of normal. Waiting, perhaps personally, for something we've sorely missed. Whatever aspects of waiting we find most difficult, may we know, like Simeon and Anna, the faithfulness of our loving God who abundantly rewarded their waiting. And may we be alert for opportunities to offer God's consolation, comfort and encouragement to those who may be struggling. A story of waiting. Second, a story of wonder. There's wonder that Simeon and Anna not only were there in the temple at the right moment, but they recognised something of who this baby was and the destiny he was to fulfil. There's another wonder. Simeon had been waiting for the consolation of Israel. But when he burst into spontaneous praise and thanksgiving to God for fulfilling his promise, he found himself saying that God's salvation was coming not just to God's people Israel, but to bring light to all the nations of a dark and suffering world. All Luke's readers may have a stake in God's gracious rescue plan. You know, even in these last 10 months, we've been provided with things of wonder. Wonder at the natural world when the busy human world was hushed. Wonder at the selfless dedication of NHS staff and key workers. Wonder at the skills of those who've produced the vaccines. 
If there's wonder at Simeon's expanded horizons for God's rescue plan, I fear I've found a danger of becoming so absorbed in wanting to keep myself safe that my horizons shrink. But just because I was born in a wealthy nation, why should I benefit from one of the very first vaccinations, when millions across the world are in far greater need than I? I see wonder too in Anna's response. At 84, didn't she have a right to put her feet up? Time the young ones took over? But that wasn't Anna's attitude. She was so overwhelmed with wonder what God had revealed, she went straight out of the temple and shared her news, Luke says, with all who were waiting for the redemption of Jerusalem. Has God given you, like Simeon, a vision for the wider world? Or like Anna, eagerness for opportunities to share good news or take practical action in our neighbourhood and those on our doorstep? A story of waiting, a story of wonder, third, a story of warning. Simeon recognises that God's gracious rescue plan would not be fulfilled without suffering. Not all would welcome their saviour. The baby in Simeon's arms would be seen by some as a threat to be rejected. And poor Mary would feel the pain. How hard that must have been to hear. How she must have longed to protect him even more. To recognise and respond to the needs of our nation and of our planet may be costly in time of, terms of time and prayer and money. To act in the local community may be costly too. But then Jesus warned later of the costly consequences of following him and having eyes open to people's needs for consolation, encouragement and hope. A story of waiting, a story of wonder, a story of warning. Sometimes older people get set in their ways, fixed in their views, unwilling to change. Simeon and Anna were two older people who remained spiritually flexible and alert through their long lives. What can we do to remain spiritually supple? What may make us spiritually stiff in the joints? God help us who are older to be open to God's prompting, adaptable and ready for whatever surprises he has in store. And those who are younger, God wants wise and faithful Christians of every age. And those still ready to respond to his prompting in 20, 30, 40 years time, could they be you? But whatever age we are, let us wait and watch and wonder at God's surprises and be open to the guidance of his Holy Spirit. Most of all.
Andrew for sharing your thoughts there. I'm sure you've all noticed there's something different. I've put my nativity set away now and I've lit a candle instead. Andrew just explained that Simeon saw Jesus as the saviour of the whole world. So I invite you now to declare our faith in God. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Andrew also mentioned Simeon's vision of Christ as a light in the world's darkness. And as we think about some of the darkness in our world today, we turn to pray. So we're going to have our intercessions and then the Lord's Prayer. And then after that, we're going to sing God is working his purpose out. At Christmas, we built a crib to remind us that God sent his only son, Jesus, to be born as a baby in Bethlehem. We remember those who celebrated his birth with joy. Now that we have reached the end of this Christmas season, as we have come to Candlemas, we remember when Jesus lived on earth and went about among us. He called his disciples to shine as lights in the world, living and sharing the gospel as a gift that is ever new. Julie set out the nativity at the beginning of the service and removed it part way through. Let's imagine ourselves putting away that nativity set at the end of the Christmas season at Candlemas. And as we consider these figures one at a time, we can pray together. 
So as we put the figures away, until next year, we pray that their example will help us to draw closer to Jesus and to walk in his ways. As we remove the three wise men, we remember their gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. We pray together. Lord, help us also to use our gifts and talents to serve and follow you. Amen. As we remove the shepherds, we remember that you call the outsiders, the lowly, the humble. We pray together. May we know that we can never be outside your love and that your calling is to all your people, Lord. Amen. As we remove G Joseph, we give thanks that he saves the lives of Mary and Jesus. So we pray together. Help us, Lord, also to see opportunities to do good in your name. Amen. As we remove Mary, we give thanks for her obedience to your call. And we are reminded that she pondered all that she had seen and heard. So, we pray together. Lord, help us to be faithful to our own calling, taking time to think and reflect about your life in us. Amen. Finally, as we remove the Christ child, Jesus, we remember that this was the beginning of his journey. We pray. Lord, strengthen us to follow him to the cross, to the grave, and his glorious resurrection at Easter. Amen. We're going to end our time of prayer together by saying the words of the Lord's Prayer, which will come up in English. Uh, but uh, a couple of months back, Caris led us in the Lord's Prayer in the Welsh language. And today, talented as she is, she's going to lead us in the Lord's Prayer in French. So if you know the French and want to join in with that, please do. But let's join in with the Lord's Prayer together. Notre Père, qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses, comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous soumets pas à la tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal. Car c'est à toi qu'appartiennent le règne, la puissance et la gloire, au siècle des siècles. Amen.
So I've got um, a copy of the children's and families calendar that they're using and going through week by week with just to highlight the Children of Light Festival which is coming up and the details of that can be found on the York Diocese website. So if you know anyone who's interested in joining in with that please just try the website or maybe get in touch with Ali our children and youth worker. And um, for our families and young children as well um, Ali's offered to do um, Sunday school via Zoom so again if you want to get in touch with Ali or through or our church website we can see if, if that could be arranged. If you want to get in touch with us for anything else please do contact us via the website or the Facebook page and um, if you'd like somebody to pray with you please get in touch and we can set that up as well. And just a reminder that as our church buildings are closed, we have restarted our Thursday fellowship by Zoom. So join us for a coffee on a Thursday morning and to share and to pray together. If anybody needs help with that, again, please get in touch via the website and we can help you. So Jesus told us he is the light of the world. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is always ready to help us. And you might want to pause the video here as you get yourself a candle. I'm just going to get one that I've got ready already. So as I light my candle, remember that Jesus is like a guiding light for us in the darkness. And as we go into the new week, we can be witnessing to Simeon's vision of Christ as a light in the world's darkness. And so we're going to sing again, longing for light. Longing for
thank you for joining us today. We've just come to our closing prayers now. Father God, you gave Jesus to help your people and to shine a light on all nations. Shine in us today. We thank you for Simeon's and Anna's combined testimony to Jesus. Give us the same contentment in Jesus as they knew and the same love, endurance and peace. Please give us Anna's energy to share the gospel throughout our lives. And Father God, place your kingdom at the top of our list of priorities at this expectant time of the year. We pray in the Spirit's power and in the name of Jesus. Amen. And for our final prayer, please join in with the words on the screen. Lord Jesus, give us the eyes of faith to see your presence in the world. Where fear closes our eyes, help us. Where tears blind us, heal us. Where busyness keeps us from noticing, slow us. Where pride gets in the way, release us. Set us free to see your love at work in the world. Amen.